up guys, Arbop here. Time to react to the part two of Oversimplified's video on the Napoleonic Wars. Um, now something I completely forgot to mention in the previous video is that um, I know that there are some people on occasion that when these sorts of reactions come up to Oversimplified videos, they'll be like, can you react to this video and like this video, like other Oversimplified videos? And I'm just going to be honest right now, before I even reacted to, the, I think the Russian Revolution was my first Oversimplified reaction that I put on YouTube. Before those videos came out, I'd I'd already watched every single oversimplified video probably at least 10 times per video. I'm not even joking about that. I love oversimplified's content. It is so good and I feel like I pick up on something new or remember something new every time I watch them so I'm not gonna react to any of those because you know I've already watched them so many times that I kind of I kind of know them by heart and I, I feel like it just wouldn't be quite the same kind of reaction so I'm not gonna be reacting to any other previous oversimplified videos because I've already seen all of them way too many times by now. I, I may have sort of a uh, fangirled a little bit on my reaction to part one of the Napoleonic Wars. Um, <laughs> I couldn't help it. I was disbelieved and amazed by Napoleon in general. And I'm also just looking at this now. This video premiered two days ago and already it has over three million views. It's number two on trending. Holy shnikes, that is amazing. Oversimplified, you absolutely deserve it. You deserve all the subscriptions and all the patrons and all the sponsorships. Like, for example, Honey, which apparently is a sponsor for this particular video. What did I say the previous video? It was um, NordVPN, Honey, and Skillshare that are like the three big sponsors that he like always gets. So good for you, Oversimplified. You make some amazing content. I hope you keep making more because you are fantastic at it. Maybe I would suggest if you ever happen to watch my channel, I don't think you, I don't think you ever will watch this reaction on my channel, but I may suggest maybe bringing in some older historical content as well. Granted, I think part of the thing too is that what makes these videos so good is that it's more recent stuff so you usually have a lot more information to grab on. There, there's a lot more notes and historical notes and accuracy that's been taken and whatnot. There's multiple sources to pull from with more recent history but you never know maybe there's some occasion like occasional stuff where we have enough information that you can make a video on something a little bit older. I mean not not saying like you know something from like you know 2000 BC or something like that no 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 not, 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 I'm not talking that crazy but you know just 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 an idea I mean obviously keep making whatever videos you can and whatever videos you want to because you make some awesome content so with that said let's go ahead let's get right into this this video was made possible by honey Loud. install now for free using the link below and start <clears throat> saving money when you shop online honey Two. After the Third and Fourth Coalition Wars, Napoleon had decisively defeated all three of his main rivals on the continent, and he Pretty was much. now undoubtedly the master of Europe. After the Battle of Friedland, his enemies yep. sued for peace, and they all met on a raft on a river <clears throat> for negotiations. They had been fighting for the past four years, but now Napoleon and Alexander surprisingly got along like a house on fire. They oh, laughed oh, together, oh, oh. they chatted long into the night, they kissed. The two had a oh lot boy. of mutual respect, and Napoleon even told his wife that if Alexander were a woman, I would make him my mistress. Kind of a weird thing to say to your wife, Napoleon. In the a end, they came to an amicable agreement. Russia would lose barely any land, and in return, they'd join France against the UK and invade Sweden. Win-win. <laughs> On the other hand, Frederick William III was sidelined, and Prussia lost an enormous amount of territory to French client states. Ouch. Only the UK remained as the last major threat to Napoleon and they continued to be a big thorn in his side, constantly funding his enemies and using their powerful navy to wreak like havoc on French ass. trade and overseas colonies. But what could Napoleon do? The British were safe across the channel. Well, he said, if I can't fight you with guns, I'll fight you with money. Earlier in 1806, Napoleon had announced so. the Continental System, a total shutoff of the UK from continental trade. No one in Europe was to trade with Britain, and Napoleon hoped that by hitting their economy, he could force them to negotiate. The Ooh. British economy did take a hit, and they responded in their typical fashion, by going to Copenhagen and blowing, blowing a bunch up of stuff up. up. But in general, stuff. the British managed to stay afloat by simply increasing their trade with other parts of the world. Many neutral countries found themselves stuck between a rock and a hard place, as the two European superpowers demanded they cease trade with the enemy. Hey America, you better not trade with the French, or else I'll come burn down the White House. What? 
This is gonna wreck my economy. I need to start saving money. How the heck am I gonna start saving money? Yeah, that's right. You know where this is going. Do you like shopping in store? <laughs> of course not. Then you'd have to get up and oh, use your legs. Great. That, that was great. Gross. That was well, what if I told you you could I'll, save I'll money doing your shopping from the ad. comfort of your own outhouse, allowing you to upgrade your outhouse to a porta potty? Go you. <laughs> Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it can find to your cart. Here I am buying 12 liters of hair gel so I can look my best. I just clicked this button and Jiminy Crickets. Honey stepped in and helped me save 40 bucks. Honey is completely free and has found over simplified viewers over $403,000 in savings so far. So seriously, why haven't you added it to your browser yet? You dingus? Click on the link below, joinhoney.com slash oversimplified. And you can get Honey for free in two Maybe. easy clicks. That's joinhoney.com slash oversimplified to start saving money on your online shopping. Now, where were we? Where were we? Oh yeah, making peace with the Russians, a continental blockade, and blowing up Copenhagen. Sick of being blown Again. up for doing almost nothing, and under significant pressure from Napoleon, the Danish officially sided with France. But Napoleon's blockade had the biggest effect on continental Europe, who were now cut off from a major trading partner, one that controlled the seas and held a rich, growing empire. And a lot of countries didn't fully comply. Portugal, a traditional British ally, refused to take part. No problem. Napoleon sent an army and invaded. But it wasn't just Portugal. Many Ouch. of Napoleon's allies were also suspect. Your Majesty, it seems that Spain isn't properly enforcing your blockade. Spain? Why not? Well, it appears they've been trying to find a way out of being your ally since they lost their fleet at Trafalgar. What is with these people? It's almost like everyone's only pretending to be my ally because they know otherwise I'd beat them up. Do I even have any real friends? Are you my friend, Pierre? Say yes or I'll slap you. Napoleon had come to mistrust his ally to the south. And in particular, Napoleon thought the Spanish royal family were an incompetent mess. All right, Carlos, you've got to get it together. How can I trust you when all you do is go hunting? Meanwhile, you let this ambitious nobody who dislikes me run the country. And you seem to be the only person in the universe who doesn't realize he's boinking your wife. And what's worse, who the heck are you? I'm the king's son. I just overthrew my dad. So actually, now I'm the king. You people are the biggest cluster of shameless, narcissistic idiots and all around just the worst people I've ever met. Cluster fudge. Here, have a kid's choice award. French forces, <laughs> many having conveniently already entered Spain to invade Portugal, occupied Spanish forts, and Napoleon invited the Spanish Ooh. royals to France to help mediate their differences. <laughs> all right, Dr. <laughs> We're here with the royal family of Spain. So, Fernando, you've been accused of plotting against your father and vying for the Spanish throne. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, Napoleon, I That's just think we're right. Well, I've got the test results right here. Right. Fernando, in the case of the Spanish throne, you are not the king. <laughs> <laughs> and Carlos, you are also not the king. <laughs> I'm the king. Actually, Ow. Napoleon made his brother the king, but for all intents and purposes, Spain was now his puppet. He expected the Spanish people yep. to be over the moon at the removal of their unpopular royal family. Imagine his surprise when it turned out that people don't really like to be subjugated by a foreign power, least of all one who had previously attacked the Catholic Church. And so the people of Spain revolted. Brutal fighting broke out as bands of armed Spaniards ambushed French troops across the kingdom, mm. and vicious atrocities were committed on both sides. Oh In addition to fighting the regular Spanish and Portuguese forces, the French had to contend with tens of thousands of guerrilla fighters throughout the Spanish countryside. The British even took the opportunity to land an army led by the future Duke of Wellington. And now, British ah. forces were defeating <coughs> French ones on land. Napoleon briefly went to Spain in person, and he did drive back the Allied armies, but before long, his attention was needed elsewhere. The whole thing became a nightmare for the emperor. He excelled yep. at traditional warfare, but this was something more akin to Napoleon's Vietnam. The whole conflict would keep hundreds of thousands of French soldiers and resources bogged down for years. Oh, Napoleon was war. never able to break Seven the will years? of the Spanish Holy people, shnikes. and this problem weakened his position in Europe. <laughs> hey, Francis. Want to go to war with Napoleon again? Oh, I don't know, Britain. He's already whomped me three times. I'll give you a bazillion pounds. <laughs> well, okay. Seeing that sure. Napoleon was now caught up in Spain and with some British funding, Austria decided maybe, just maybe, this time, they'd have a chance. Oh my God, there's a so did they? No. Napoleon Hello. defeated them in just four months. It was quick, but it wasn't exactly easy. 
The Austrians had been watching Napoleon and learning, and they had made some reforms. While Napoleon, after years of war, was increasingly having to rely on inexperienced conscripts. So this time, the Austrians gave him a run for his money. The Fifth Coalition saw some of the bloodiest battles to date, including Napoleon's first major defeat. And when he did finally defeat the Austrians at the Battle of Wagram, it was a very costly victory. Still, oh, Napoleon had yet again kicked Francis's butt, and as part of the Dang. peace terms, Austria lost a bunch more land. Not long after, however, Napoleon and Francis came to another agreement. It was decided that Napoleon would marry Francis's young daughter. But wait, doesn't Napoleon already have a wife? Already have a wife? Well, yes, yeah. he did. Josephine and Napoleon had become quite fond of one another, but now that Napoleon was playing the monarch game, he needed a male heir, and his aging wife wasn't giving him one. So it was out with the old and in with the new. Wow. At least he didn't behead anyone. For Austria, they felt that if Napoleon was going to keep on winning, they may as well be on his side. So through the marriage, Napoleon got an alliance with Austria and a beautiful baby potato. Between the failing blockade against Britain, the ongoing war really in Spain, and now his recent struggles in Austria, cracks in Napoleon's invincibility were beginning to show. But still, look at this map. So hey, blue, I know, so beautiful. Still... Even Sweden, after being pulverized by Russia, overthrew their king, and after an interesting wow. chain of events, ended up putting one of Napoleon's own marshals in charge. Marshal Bernadotte took the name Karl Johan and became Crown Prince of Sweden after agreeing to join Napoleon's continental system. For now, Sweden was Team France. Napoleon wow, was on top of the world. Empire. He had won an endless string of victories. <laughs> All he had to do now was sit back <laughs> and Peninsula not make any war. major miscalculations that could completely turn the tide of war. So let's see what comes next. Oh, but that's two older right. brothers, I'm gonna lie. Francis' alliance with Russia was a terrifying prospect. Together, the two could have been unstoppable, yep. but unfortunately, the alliance didn't last. The Russians felt they weren't getting a fair deal. Napoleon's Duchy of Warsaw right on their doorstep was a bit of an insult. And then their economy began to tank because of Napoleon's British blockade. And eventually, they began to open up trade. Your Majesty, it seems Alexander is no longer abiding by the continental system and has begun trading with the British. Alexander? But he kissed me. He kissed you? You wouldn't get it, Pierre. No one would ever kiss you. <laughs> the security of Napoleon's empire depended on removing the British threat, and he wasn't happy with Russia's backdoor shenanigans. And so in 1812, Napoleon decided to go to war. He gathered together the most massive army Europe had ever seen, made up of troops from every corner of his empire, wow. and he prepared to invade. Okay, it looks like Napoleon's that's coming for us. Generals, I need ideas. I don't we think could it's stand and Hitler's, fight. Though. No, that's that stupid. Like You're stupid. We could run away. You. You're a star. You'll remember Napoleon's tactics relied on astonishing speed to outmaneuver his enemy and force a quick, decisive battle. Well, I've got two words for you. Scorched Earth. If his opponent retreated while scorching the earth, his men couldn't live off the land. And if his men couldn't live off the land, he needed yep. his supply trains. And if he needed his supply trains, he couldn't move quickly. And if he couldn't move quickly, he couldn't outmaneuver his enemy. And if he couldn't outmaneuver his enemy, I think you get the point. Yeah. Napoleon yeah, launched his invasion and hoped for a quick battle. But all he could do was try to catch weren't, the retreating Russians while moving deeper and deeper into in hostile well. territory. This is, this as he went, the horribly hot Napoleon's summer plan. devastated his army. His men died of heat, exhaustion, and disease. Wait till Supplies began to run out and his men Just began to wait. starve. Many deserted, and still the Russians continued to retreat. Dang. Numerous times, Napoleon considered turning Look back, but that dropping. little voice in his head kept on telling him, keep going. Just keep, a little further. Keep going, keep going. And don't worry, you're definitely average height for the time. He nearly caught the Russians at Smolensk, but it was his birthday, so he had a party instead. <laughs> when he finally reached Moscow, he predicted the Russians wouldn't be willing to give up such a historic and holy city without no, a fight, wouldn't. and he, was right. The Russians finally turned to face him for the single deadliest but day man, of the Napoleonic so Wars, the Battle of Borodino. The Russians fought valiantly, and as he got older, Napoleon's battle tactics seemed to become a little less refined and a little more run straight at the enemy, try not to die. He launched a full frontal assault at the Russian defenses, and as a result, the death toll was colossal. The Russians eventually decided to retreat, leaving Moscow to fall into Napoleon's hands. Quick, the French yeah, are taking the city. Release all these prisoners immediately and tell them to burn the it to the ground. By like a, well, by like well, a Jimmy the arsonist, you are not going to believe your luck. Moscow went up in flames, and as Napoleon entered, it became very clear his army wouldn't be able to stay there very long. But he had just defeated the Russian army and taken their most beloved city. In his mm, mind, he had last? won. So he sent Tsar Alexander in St. Petersburg a letter. Your Imperial Majesty, 
Napoleon requests your surrender. How shall I respond? You shan't, Dimitri. Ever? Ever. But, your majesty, it will be winter soon. The French forces are stuck 500 miles into Russian territory with dwindling supplies. If we don't say anything, well, then they'll all die. Oh! <laughs> After waiting for a response for about a month, the first snow of winter began to fall, and Napoleon sensed the catastrophe that was about to unfold. At least he, he decided their only it. choice now was to get out. And that's when it happened. It got cold. Stupid, Stupid cold. cold. His glorious invasion had just become a race for survival. As the Russians realized the French were fleeing for their lives, they began to close in on their supply line. Men froze to death, their horses as well. There was starvation and disease. The injured and dying could only be left by the At side of the as road as, as it was snow, too slow to try to were. carry them. And all along Urged. the way, the dreaded Russian Cossacks stalked the bleeding French army and dropping, every now and then dropping. swept in for a quick attack. Napoleon, fearing capture, kept a vial of poison around his neck. At one point, the Russian armies nearly trapped him against the Berezina River. But a little Napoleon cleverness gave him the old Jeffrey Duke, tricking them into thinking he was going south and then escaping across rapidly built pontoon bridges to the north. When the Russians realized where he was and began to close in, the French burned the bridges before everyone could cross. Hundreds drowned and thousands were captured. At this point, Napoleon Jeez. got wind of plots against him forming in Paris, so he abandoned his men and went back to France. The remaining French stragglers made it across the border. It's been estimated over 600,000 men went into Russia. Less than 100,000 returned. Napoleon yeah. was now in a very Damn. precarious situation. Yeah, His yes. army had just been obliterated and the other European leaders smelled blood. Here was an opportunity to take advantage of a weakened Napoleon, regain territory and influence, the war, and liberate the Europe from his dirty French paws. And so they weak. began to turn. Prussia soon broke their alliance and switched sides, while Austria declared neutrality. Even Sweden, led by one of Napoleon's old marshals, joined the Allies, partly due to Napoleon's earlier invasion of Swedish Pomerania. The War of the Sixth Coalition oh had begun. The coalition forces had been reforming their armies, and they were now Whoa. much better. Jeez. And the UK had also significantly amped up its financial aid to its continental allies. Yeah. Their armies quickly advanced through Poland and into Germany. In Paris, Napoleon was understandably freaking out. He needed yeah. to put together a new army fast, and he called up over 100,000 new conscripts, mostly teenagers. Mm. He also put his factories into overdrive. And he was like, you, make more rifles. You, build new cannons. You, make more horses. I don't make horses. Then who makes horses? Horses make horses. Explain how. Well, when a daddy horse and a mommy oh horse God. love each other very much. Yes, go on. Well, then the daddy horse. I'm sorry, Napoleon. You're 43. I thought you'd know this stuff. Don't touch me. I'm gonna be sick. As it turned out, Napoleon's lack of horses would take the biggest toll on his army, since his tactics relied on speed, maneuverability, and destruction. When he took the fight to the Allies in 1813, he did defeat them and sent them running. But lacking cavalry, he was unable to effectively pursue and destroy. He needed horses. For the Allies, being defeated in battle by a man whose army was now full of inexperienced conscripts was concerning. So both sides were yeah. like, hold up, time out. The Allies were somewhat cornered, and had Napoleon kept going, it's possible he could have won. But instead he agreed to a brief truce with the Austrians mediating between the two sides. When Austria demanded Napoleon make major concessions, Napoleon told them to shove it. Having had their terms rejected, Austria felt now they were justified in saying, well, we tried, and they joined the coalition. Okay everyone, look at us. They tried. The boys are back they together. Failed. But Napoleon is still dangerous, so we need a plan. Any ideas? Hmm. Nobody go rogue this time. Ooh, I know. Uh, no, forget it. That's stupid. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I've got it! When he approaches, we run away. Genius. He's a genius. The plan was as follows. Wherever Napoleon advanced, whoever he advanced on would avoid battle, allowing the others to sweep in from the sides mm. and attack the French marshals that's, guarding that's his smart. flanks. Yep. Essentially, the plan was, don't try to fight Napoleon. And this plan worked tremendously. The Allies scored a number of victories that saw Napoleon move back to the city of Leipzig, where he would make one last major stand as the Allied armies converged in on him from yep. all sides. The stage was set for the biggest and bloodiest battle of the Napoleonic Wars, the Battle Ooh. of Leipzig. Leipzig. Almost half a million troops from oh over boy. a dozen nations stretched across the battlefield. Holy the French found moly. themselves fighting on all sides for four days against the Austrians, Prussians, Swedes, and Russians. It's no wonder this battle is also sometimes referred to as the Battle 
of the nations. The French fought ferociously, but ultimately were no match for the coordinated efforts of the coalition. They At one so point, in the midst of, so of battle, Saxon too. troops allied with the French had a team huddle and were like, hey guys, I'm pretty sure the French are losing. Let's switch sides. And so they did. Oh. When it became clear that Napoleon couldn't win, he ordered a retreat across the only bridge over the river. The Allies swarmed into the city, and desperate fighting raged in the streets. Okay, Jeez. Corporal, after everyone has crossed the river, I need you to blow up the bridge. Okay? Not before everyone's crossed. After. You got that? Yes, Colonel. I'm not five. I can comprehend time. Good. Wait. Did he say before or after? Well, fortune favors the bold. The bridge was blown early, and 30,000 French troops were stranded and captured. A disaster. And with yeah. that, the dominoes were beginning to come crashing down on Napoleon. That in the cool south, effect. an army under the British Duke of Wellington had been pushing the French out of Spain for the past few years and were now crossing into France. Austrian armies That's had pushed into territory. Italy, while Napoleon's old flamboyant cavalry commander, Murat, who Napoleon had made king of Naples, decided to switch sides. Well, German states, many resentful after years under Napoleon's thumb, turned against him, and the Confederation of the Rhine collapsed. Bernadotte invaded Denmark, and they were forced to join the coalition, while the Netherlands were liberated. You'd think Napoleon might have seen the writing on the wall, but he was Napoleon, and so instead, he prepared to keep fighting. As attitudes in Paris were already nope, beginning to turn against idea. him, he called up more conscripts to defend the exhausted nation. As for the Allies, they weren't sure exactly what they were aiming for here. A few peace offers were floated that may have let Napoleon keep his position, but the British kept throwing around even more money, and eventually, they all agreed that the ultimate aim was the deposition of Napoleon entirely. Yep. And so, Napoleon embarked on one of his most famous campaigns to defend the homeland. He was completely outnumbered, but the Allied armies had split up and spread out. His army was so small that he could move at lightning speed, and he used this to his advantage. In the famous Six Days campaign against Prussian General Blücher, he attacked from all directions and defeated Blücher's forces four times, only suffering a tenth wow. of the casualties he inflicted. Even with his back Jeez. completely to the wall, Napoleon was still Napoleon. Then yeah. he turned south to take on Schwarzenberg's Army of Bohemia and enjoyed even more victories. However, Napoleon's problem was that he couldn't be everywhere at once, and wherever he wasn't, the Allies continued to push towards yep. Paris. He made one last-ditch attempt at moving in behind the enemy lines and cutting off their communications, but Paris was in disarray, yeah, and the people Paris were sick of war. Is, one ambitious yeah. and slightly treacherous politician sent the Allied armies a letter basically saying, hey guys, come on in. And so, they did. The city's defenders surrendered, and as the Allied leaders entered Paris, the people cheered them as bringers of peace. Paris had fallen. Yeah. Quick, marshals, gather your men. We're gonna launch an assault on Paris. Where are my marshals? They all left and told me to give you this note. Napoleon's marshals Bruh. had realized what he hadn't. It was over, and they insisted all that was left now he... for the good of France was for him he was to abdicate. He did keep and without the support of his army, Napoleon had no choice. He hoped his son could take his place, but I it was decided instead to restore the old Bourbon monarchy. Old King Louis XVI's brother would become the King of France. Oh, it was great. almost like the French Revolution had never even happened. But what will we do with Napoleon? We can't have a hyperactive 44-year-old menace Island. running around reigniting revolutionary well, ideals and plotting his return. Well, why don't we send him, mm, I don't know, there. The location chosen for Napoleon's exile was the small island of Elba, just off the coast of Italy. Napoleon was to rule over the island, and even got to keep the title Emperor of Elba. The Allies must have been in stitches when they came up with that. When he learned what his fate was to be, he drank the poison he had been keeping around his neck. But it had gone out of date, so instead of a quick and painless death, he got a painful stummy wummy instead. Before he left France, he addressed his oldest and closest guard one last time, making an emotional speech that ended with him kissing their flag. And off he went to exile. <laughs> the deal that was given to him was actually quite generous. His family were given yeah. titles, he was to receive a state pension from France, and he was able to receive many distinguished visitors, all eager to come and meet the famed <laughs> emperor. And he ruled over Elba well, improving infrastructure and introducing many legal and social reforms aimed at improving life on the island. Hey, Napoleon, just coming in to check on how it's all going. Holy smokes! But it wasn't all good. For one thing, he learned of the death of his first wife, Josephine, and was deeply saddened. 
He was forbidden from seeing his son and current wife, and in Austria, Emperor Francis had ordered a local count to seduce her so she would forget about Napoleon. Then, the new King Louis XVIII refused to give Napoleon his agreed pension. He was under constant threat of assassination, and there were even rumors that the Allies were thinking of relocating him somewhere even more remote. But the biggest problem was that Napoleon was once the master of Europe. He had lived a thrilling life of adventure, fame, and glory. Yep, yep. Now, he found himself on a tiny island in the Mediterranean, and he was bored. Wouldn't it be nice if he could somehow return to France and reclaim his throne? Hey, Napoleon, want to go back to France and reclaim your throne? I would, Pierre. But how? Well, I was thinking we could just take this boat. Will that work? Surprisingly, yes. Pierre, remember when I told you no one would ever kiss you? Yes, sire. Well, pucker up, boyo. Yay. When Napoleon left Elba, it wasn't really the daring escape you might think. He basically had kind of a leaving ceremony, hopped on a ship, and sailed back to France. He brought with him an army of about a thousand men, and he began his journey to Paris. Oh, that's so However, well. in Paris, there was now a new king, and at first, the people largely accepted him because the last few years of war under Napoleon had brought immense death and economic suffering. But that's right. The king is back, baby. But Divine right to rule. But Don't worry, everyone. I know mm -hmm. the economy is kaput, mm -hmm. but I and my courtiers will withdraw into this palace, and we will definitely work as hard as we can to fix everything. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's why we got rid of the king. As the yeah. Bourbon monarchy began to look more and more like a return to the past, and the returning nobility seemed hellbent on regaining their lost privileges, the people weren't too happy. Nope. And so, Napoleon hoped that his glorious return would be met with jubilation. In the end, the reaction was a little mixed, but many were happy to see their old emperor. Your Majesty, it seems that Napoleon is back and marching this way with a thousand men. That guy? No problem. I have hundreds of thousands of men. Send them to arrest him. Uh, your Majesty, it seems the thousands of men we sent to arrest Napoleon have joined all joined us? his side. Yep. Well, I'm off to Belgium. If you ever need a king again, be sure to let me know. As Napoleon continued his journey, the king had sent battalions of men to stop him, but they largely comprised of Napoleon's old soldiers, many unhappy with King Louis's military reforms. Mm -hmm. And so, when ordered to arrest him, they simply couldn't do it. In one famous incident, the troops began to cry out, Long live the Emperor! When Napoleon wow. reached Paris, with King Louis having fled, he entered unopposed to reclaim his throne. Napoleon was back from the dead. Okay, everyone, now that we've finally gotten rid of that guy, no, let's try to make sure dead. something like this can never happen again. What's that doing there? Hey, fellow monarchs. <laughs> but he came back. This time, Napoleon promised he would be a mucho mucho good boy and not start any wars. But the Allied leaders were having none of it. They declared Napoleon an outlaw and the illegitimate ruler of France. Then, they declared war. Not on France, but on Napoleon himself. And when you have multiple empires declaring war on you as an individual, that's how you know you're a very naughty boy. The yeah. Allied powers began making plans to combine their forces and once again invade France. The most immediate threat to Napoleon were the British and Prussians hanging course, out in nearby Belgium. If Napoleon could knock them out quickly, maybe he could force the Allies to negotiate, and maybe he could hold on to his power. Together, the two armies to the north outnumbered him, so he made a plan to divide them and take them on separately. Historians debate how much of a chance Napoleon had here, but this same Another strategy of dividing and conquering had worked for him multiple times. He marched north with 125,000 men and took on the Allies in a number worked, of initial engagements, defeating time? the Prussians before turning to take on the British. But to Napoleon's dismay, miscommunication and hesitation among his marshals mm -hmm. allowed both enemy armies to retreat. And crucially, rather than fleeing east, the Prussians moved north, where they could remain in contact with the British. Napoleon sent a force to hold off the Prussians as he moved in on the British, now holding a defensive position at Waterloo. Waterloo. Prussian General Blücher sent word that this he would come to Wellington aid if he could just hold off the French for long about. enough. Napoleon had to defeat Wellington before the Prussian army could arrive in force. Here it and is. it was close. The British held the high ground and a number of key defensive buildings across the battlefield. After waiting some hours he didn't have for the ground to dry, Napoleon sent men to assault the Hougoumont farm, but the British German garrison there held out. 
French Marshal Ney launched a number of miscalculated cavalry charges at the British lines. <laughs> the British formed defensive square formations, and they tore the French cavalry yep. to shreds. Yep. While one guy chose the absolute worst time <laughs> to go on a bender. The French did manage to capture a farmhouse directly in front of the British line. And from there, they unleashed artillery hellfire on the British square yep. formations. And as Napoleon sent his imperial guard in to finish the British off, a nervous Wellington knew his lines were at breaking point. But the Prussians had earlier begun to arrive, and now they were arriving in large numbers. Yep. And after the British held out and sent the French Imperial Guard running, the French lines panicked, fearing they had been encircled, and they began to flee. Yep. The Battle of Waterloo was an Allied victory. And with that, Massive Napoleon's hopes of them. returning to glory were vanquished. He knew he was defeated. He went to the British and said, can I please have a house near London? And the British replied, no. Instead, nope. to make sure Napoleon was put away once and for all, they sent him to one of the most isolated and remote places they could think of, a tiny island in the Atlantic Ocean, St. So Helena. Here, a deeply isolated and depressed Emperor Napoleon would live the remaining years of his life. His house was a wooden bungalow, not exactly on par with the Tuileries Palace. Much to his frustration, his captors referred to him as general, rather than calling him emperor. His mail was censored, his visitors were vetted. There was almost no way he could escape such an isolated island. But just to be sure, he was guarded by 2,000 British soldiers and two wow. ships that circled the island 24 hours a day. He had once been the most powerful man alive, and images of the victorious Napoleon depict a strong leader, hand firmly in jacket. Depictions of Napoleon on St. Helena show a disheveled old man, hand firmly in pants. He had lost everything. And by the way, he Poor was only guy. 46. So maybe it's about time you, um, you know what? You're doing all right, kid. <laughs> Napoleon fought one last battle while on the island, the battle for his reputation. He spent hours writing his memoirs, espousing his achievements, recording his greatness, and turning himself and his story into a phenomenal legend. Of course. And in this battle, he certainly succeeded. His mark on history cannot be denied. No. After his defeat, the European Not monarchs had got to work restoring Europe to its traditional balance and reasserting their dominance. But after Napoleon had spread the influence of the French Revolution, these returning monarchs would have a difficult time regaining their absolute control. Yep. France returned to the rule of the Bourbons, but it would go on to stage another revolution and then another one. Reaction to Napoleon's rule in places like Germany and Italy propelled forward the ideas and feelings of modern unity and nationalism, and his Napoleonic code still remains the basis of law in various modern countries. The modern world owes a lot to Napoleon's legacy. Yep. He yep. remains statistically possibly the greatest military general in history, and yeah, his revolutionary military tactics changed the face of warfare. He was the last truly great leader to both lead his armies in battle while retaining total political control over a vast empire. Yep. There's still hope for Joe Biden, but the man remains somewhat of an enigma, and we still aren't sure exactly what to make of him in some regards. Was he the champion of the French Revolution, spreading equality and wherever he went, jacket. or did he betray it by making himself an absolute monarch and restricting certain liberties? Was he an ambitious and aggressive conqueror, hellbent on bringing Europe to its knees? Or was he simply defending himself against an aggressive Europe, hellbent on reducing his Answered power? All Some those things is... will yes. continue to be debated. Napoleon died at the age of 51, officially of stomach cancer, but some believe he may have been poisoned. The British buried him in a tin coffin inside a mahogany coffin, inside a lead coffin, inside another mahogany coffin. I guess this time, they wanted to make sure he stayed where they put him. In 1840, his remains were moved to Paris, where they now rest under the dome of Les Invalides. The man from humble origins, with huge ambition, Crazy ruthless determination, like immaculate Goodness. skill on the battlefield, and a hefty dose of luck, who was determined to make his mark on history, did just that. Oh, yeah. There is no immortality, he said, but the memory that is left in the minds of men. And in that sense, Napoleon knew he wow. would live on forever. Yeah. Oh, and to reiterate, he was definitely average height for the time. <laughs> God, I love oversimplified video. I think I think with the first part there were just so many victories and so many things that I just did not know or expect that I, I just commentated so much and this time yes I, I was yawning a little bit I, I apologize for that but even so there's still so much fascinating knowledge throughout 
throughout both of these parts, really. I did not know almost a lot. Like, obviously, there were a couple of things that I was aware of. You know, the, the whole, you know, Napoleon being short myth or something like that. And, of course, you know, the Battle of Waterloo was one of the most spectacular battles of the Napoleonic Wars. Probably one of the most spectacular fails for Napoleon, but it was also near the end of his conquest era. And, holy shnikes, he was such a brilliant military brilliant and strategic military mastermind who also managed to have like a firm place in his own government and be able to help with some reforms and like holy crap on a cracker i i'm just disbelieved i'm completely disbelieved and even at the very end, he was still trying, and it's not like he was just being an idiot about it. He, like, he lost so much, especially by the time that he was, you know, first banished off to, um, to, to that little, that little baby island off of Italy. He, he still wanted so much, and he wasn't trying to be, like, an absolute dick or jerk about it, but he accomplished so much. Like, hell, if I had accomplished as much as he did in the span of just a couple of decades, I'd be still trying to fight. I mean, I certainly wouldn't be stupid about it, and I don't necessarily think he was, but man, I I do honestly think he was probably, he probably is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, military genius and strategic mastermind of all time. He was so intelligent, so charismatic, so skilled and talented, and knowledgeable on all different kinds of things. And he was innovative, too. Like, gosh, I don't think I've ever had so much respect for a person just jump up, skyrocket to whole new levels that I've never experienced before. Sure, I have respect for plenty of people and historical figures and whatnot, but I barely knew anything about him, and all of a sudden my respect is just like, whoop! Wow. Thank you for making these videos oversimplified. I definitely needed to see this. There was so much here that I was just completely unaware. I, I, I'm... I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. Yeah, seriously, you keep making this amazing content oversimplified. I have no idea if you'll ever watch this video, but... I do hope Oversimplify keeps making so much of this content. I mean, eventually, probably gonna run out of some topics to talk about, but make as much content as you possibly can. Because again, this has like well over 3 million, like, okay, maybe not well over 3 million views, hang on. 3.25 million views already. After like two days or less. That's just crazy. Clearly, people love Oversimplified's content. It's not difficult to see why. There are lots of people out there that do enjoy historical content, and I'm betting that some of these are rewatches. I'm betting there are probably a couple of people out there, I'd say maybe like 2% of the people, who have watched it more than once already. Like, t dang. Just, just dang. That's, that's insane. Anyways, that is this reaction on the Napoleonic Wars. I've learned so much, and I am so glad I watched these videos. It's, it's nice to see Oversimplified's content, especially on more recent history that I'm a lot more unfamiliar with, but you never know if there might be a little bit of older history that I might know a little bit more about that I tend to like a lot more. Again, it might be a little bit harder because there may not be as many accurate historical accounts of various people and places and events and whatnot, but wow, I always learn something fascinating whenever I watch these videos and that's just awesome. Good for you, Oversimplified. Good for you. Don't, like, seriously. If if people are not subscribed to Oversimplified's video, do it. Please do it. This guy makes awesome content. He deserves all the views and all the patrons and he and all the credit. He deserves so much of this. He puts so much time into researching these episodes, into scripting them out, into making the jokes, into animating it. Like, it's it's unreal. There's no way I could do any of this stuff, mostly because of the animation, but I also, my sense of humor is not good. Anyways, I think I'm going to end this particular video here, so yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Seriously, if you have not subscribed to Oversimplified yet, do it. But as usual, until the next video, guys, check you laters.